Before World War II, several nationalist movements were formed against European colonialism that dominated various regions of Asia and Africa. European countries aimed to extract the natural resources of the colonies and impose their products on native populations. The metropolises didn't develop practices that improved the growth of these regions. With the onset of the Cold War, both the Soviet and US governments, which sought world hegemony, were interested in attracting European colonies in Africa and Asia for their spheres of influence and by this began to encourage the self-determination of peoples in the colonies. By 1965, approximately, most nationalist movements in Asia and Africa would gain the independence of their countries. In some cases, this achievement would be obtained peacefully, in others, it would just be possible through armed fights. In 1945, there were only four independent countries in Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, South Africa and Liberia. The rest of the continent was under the rule of five European nations, England, France, Belgium, Portugal and Spain. Between the 1930s and 1940s, an organization brought together the largest ethnic group in Kenya, the Kukuyu Central Association, which demanded the return of their lands. From this movement emerged the guerrilla organization Mau Mau led by Jomo Kenyatta, who, from 1952 onwards, started to promote armed actions against the British. Kenya's independence would be won in 1963. In North Africa, nationalists from Tunisia, French Morocco and Algeria rebelled against France between 1952 and 1954. In 1956, after a few years of armed struggle, Tunisia and Morocco became independent. In Algeria, the war just ended in 1962 with the triumph of the Algerian National Liberation Front. The emergence of nationalist movements and the weakening of the dynamics of domination were enough for some European powers to start negotiating political independence with African leaders. Its objective was to maintain the economic dependence of the colonies as much as possible. This policy of controlled independence was mainly carried out by the government of England. By peaceful means, the emancipation took place in several colonies. Sudan, in 1956, Gold Coast, current Ghana in 1957, Nigeria in 1960, Sierra Leone in 1961, Kenya in 1963, Zambia and Gambia in 1965, among others. The new countries became part of the British Commonwealth, an organization that had been created in 1930 with the objective of bringing together former English colonies and reserving the political and economic interests of Great Britain in Africa. The government of France also sought to administer the emancipation of some of its colonies peacefully. In 1958, Guinea became independent and by 1960, almost all the French colonies were emancipated, such as Madagascar, Senegal and others. Portugal, as it is very dependent on the exploitation of resources and cheap labor from its African colonies, did not agree with the idea of independence. Due to the impossibility of negotiation, after 1961, guerrilla movements began to emerge in all of them. In Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau, the Marxist Amilcar Cabral took over the leadership of the emancipation movement. In Mozambique, the anthropologist Eduardo Mondlein founded the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, also with the Marxist orientation. In Angola, the emancipation movement split into three factions, the Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, with a Marxist orientation, the National Front for the Liberation of Angola, anti-communist, and the National Union Union for the Total Independence of Angola, Maoist in the beginning and later anti-communist. Since 1926, Portugal had lived under a right-wing dictatorial regime. In April 1974, young officers of the Portuguese Armed Forces of Socialist Tendency overthrew the dictatorship in the Carnation Revolution and took over the power. The new regime recognized the independence of its African colonies, Guinea-Bissau, still in 1974, and Cape Verde, Mozambique and Angola in 1975. In Angola, Agostinho Neto, 
leader of the MPLA assumed the presidency and implemented a one-party government of socialist tendencies which was fought by the other factions. It was the beginning of a civil war that would only end in 2002, with a balance of more than one million dead. With the fighting over, Angola entered a phase of reconstruction. Many foreign companies have been settling in the country. One of the most notable presences is that of the Chinese, who have carried out various infrastructure services. After independence, some minorities tried to gain their autonomy in the newly formed states. In Sudan, for example, the population of the south, with a Christian majority, tried to separate itself from the north, which is predominantly Muslim. A civil war was maintained from 1955 until 1972, but Sudanese territorial unity was maintained until 2011, when South Sudan was formed. In Nigeria, between 1967 and 1970, a government's smothered coup d'etat led the country to a violent civil war, which left 2 million dead, most of them belonging to the Igbo ethnic group. In some newly formed countries, the need to assemble and equip the armed forces led to a process of militarization that brought to the fore a military elite, considered a political alternative to replace civilian rulers who were unable to meet the needs of the population. Thus, in the late 1960s, most African countries were ruled by army officers who implemented dictatorial with the political emancipation of African countries, the continent's major problems, many of them generated by the slave trade, which reduced the continent's population, and by the years of European exploitative colonization, triggered several crises and civil wars. One of the causes of conflicts between countries and or groups and ethnicities was the arbitrary definition of borderlines by Europeans during colonization. As a result, people of different cultures and customs were forced to cohabit in the same region, under the same government. With independence and nationalism, rivalries between these peoples emerged, which often culminated in violent confrontations. South Africa was initially colonized by the Dutch and later by the British. In 1911, the white minority of Dutch origin, called the Africans or Boer, passed several laws restricting the rights of the black majority. In the following year, under the leadership of the Zulu Pixley Ka Isaac Asim, several people formed the African National Congress to defend their rights. In 1931, South Africa became independent, but the Afrikaners remained in the political economic domain of the country, keeping the different black ethnicities excluded from any governmental body. From 1948 onwards, the situation was worsened by the institution of apartheid, from Africans meaning separation, a segregationist policy that prevented black people from owning land, participating in politics, having access to areas or services restricted only to whites, in addition to prohibiting marriage between them. In 1962, the African National Congress was outlawed and its leader, Nelson Mandela, was arrested and sentenced to life in prison, charged with sabotage, which he admitted, and conspiring to help other countries invade South Africa, which he denied. It was the 1970s that the international community began to mobilize against segregation. South Africa was expelled from the British Commonwealth, the UN subjugated the country to political and economic sanctions, and South African athletes were banned from participating in international competitions. Black South Africans, in turn, put aside the policy of non-violence and started to fight. In 1984, in response to an anti-apartheid demonstration, the government enacted martial law. Pressure from domestic and international movements increased. In 1990, President Frederick ordered the release of Nelson Mandela and authorized the legalization of the African National Congress. In 1994, apartheid came to an end. That same year, Nelson Mandela was elected president of of South Africa. As in Africa, at the end of the Second World War, nationalist pro-emancipation movements were formed in Asia, some with a socialist orientation. In 1945, nationalist forces proclaimed the independence of Indonesia, whose territory was under the control of the Netherlands. The Dutch reaction gave rise to a war that only ended in 1949, when Indonesian autonomy was recognized. The Philippines, which had been under U.S. rule since 1898, managed to emancipate itself in 1946 
1946, Indochina, which was a colony of France, became independent in 1954 after an armed rebellion. The Indochinese territory was then divided into three autonomous countries, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. The region of Vietnam was initially subdivided into two states, North Vietnam, Communist and South Vietnam, Capitalist. The unification between the two countries would take place in 1976 after a bloody war with the involvement of the United States, which aimed to control the advance of communism in that region. In the British colonies, the process of emancipation involved the peaceful way and the armed struggle. India became independent in 1947 and Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in 1948, Bhutan in 1949 and the Federation of Malaysia in 1957, which would later become Singapore and Malaysia.